Hello and welcome to this video where we're going to be building and debugging our first Mac OS application using Rad Studio. Now the structure of this video, we're first of all going to be looking at Rad Studio in Windows where we're going to be checking our application using the local IDE and then we're going to be using our remote debugging and uh, deployment technology called PA Server to deploy and build and uh, eventually, if you're submitting to the App Store, you'd be using it to sign the application ready for submission. So we're going to go through the steps required. Uh, the first time you run this, there's a few extra steps, but once that's done, then obviously it's there and available. So this is really intended for the first time just to make sure you're up and running without any problems. So let's pull up Rad Studio. I'm going to create a multi-device application. And uh, you can also access fi File New and then choose from the new options. We're going to just choose a blank application here. And I'm just going to do a very simple button edit and label button uh, application. This really is just for illustration purposes only. So I'm not even going to bother making too many changes. We're literally just going to set the label value to be what's in the edit control. And we can change the text property here to update. Okay, that'll do. I say it's not meant to be a uh, a full lesson on how to build applications. This is really just to show that it is from a completely blank application that we're building and running this through. So we can see here we've got the target platform for Windows and I'm just going to go ahead and just save this project. Now, if we want to target to Mac OS, then we just need to choose Mac OS in here. Now, unfortunately, we haven't got anywhere to build this and deploy it out to, and if we try to build it for the first time, it's going to ask us for a profile. So we need to actually set up a profile, and this allows us to connect to our remote machine. Um, first thing we need to do is actually set up the connection on the remote machine. So when you install Rad Studio, by default, in the uh, in the actual folder where it's installed, you'll find a folder called PA Server. Now in here, there's a Windows installer, and there's also a Mac installer, and we're literally just going to drag that across to our Mac. Let's uh, do that here. I'm going to drag that onto the desktop of my Mac, and uh, I'm then able to double click on it and set ready to install. So I'm just going to agree and literally you can change the location uh, it installs into the main applications. Okay great so now I have a new PA server installed. So now with my PA server installed I can go and launch it. Now this launches a terminal session and we can see that the PA server, the platform assistance server has started up. Uh, it's asking me for a password here. Now this is a password that we're going to use to connect into the Mac. You can put whatever you want in there, um, but you then need to put the same thing into Rad Studio. So just for now, I'm going to leave that blank. Now if we go into Rad Server, it's asking me for a profile. So I'm just going to call this uh, my MacBook. Now it's asking for a remote IP of the machine. So in PA Server, if you type I, you can see the IP addresses pop up that the PA Server is listening to. And what I always find useful is just to come into the command line 
on the machine. And I have a quick look to see what the local host is. So I'm here 192.168.111. So I'm going to use this address here. That way um, I'm not having to bridge the internet connection. It's going to use the local VM internet, uh, which just simplifies the networking. So I can test the connection. Obviously, if you put a password in there, then you just need to put the password in here for the connection. And every time you start this up, just use the same password. Or you can actually go ahead um, and define uh, a file that is used to launch PA server, but then has the password within it. Um, this is just a, a simple way, because I'm only going to leave it open for the point that I need to use it anyway, so it's not a security issue for me. So the first time you run it, it's going to ask to add the SDK from the Mac. So I'm just going to say OK. And what this is doing now, this is using the, uh, the Xcode setup to be able to import the libraries that are required for deploying Mac applications. You can see it's harvesting all the, the header files and the dialibs and so on. Now during the process, if you get any requests to uh, around a file already existing, just say you know, yes to all, that's fine. And now that we have the libraries imported, the compile can continue. And uh, we can now see that we have our MacBook profile selected on the, the Mac. So we'll go ahead and I'm just going to rebuild here just to show you now that this time through it's literally just able to compile link and we're ready to run. So being ready to run, we can see our configuration is set up. We're on the, the debug build here at the moment. So I'm going to run with debugging and just run this side by side so you can actually see this simple application run across. Now the first time you might need to just pop in your password for the Mac. This is just to allow the developer tool chain access for debugging. And the application will then pop up on the Mac. So we can see here is our Mac version of it. And I can put in hello world from Mac. And we can see that's all working quite happily now. So let's just go ahead and in the IDE put a breakpoint in. And we're just going to change this to hello world. We can now see that uh, as we click through, our call stack has now come up. We can see that this has come through from the button one click, which is part of a T control click, uh, which is part of a T custom button. Uh, so we can see all the inheritance working through there. Uh, we can also see down that um, this is picking up the, the platform Mac, T platform, Cocoa, mouse event. So it's driving all the way down to the actual platform specific elements from the Mac. We can put in here local watches. So we can say like, you know, edit one dot text. And uh, we can see here that's come up with the hello world. And we could put a, another watch in here for label one dot text. Hello world from Mac. So we can see those and also holding the mouse over, we can see the updates that are going through here. And if we press F8 just to step through, we can see that's now updated and the watches are updated as well. And carried on through. So there we have it. Our first application set up on the Mac, debugged on the Mac, or working directly from Rad Studio. So one last thing before we close actually quickly. Um, in the PA server, if you put a question mark, you can see a list of the different commands that come up. And here you can generate the login pass file that I spoke about earlier with the G command. Um, you can set V for verbose mode, turn that on and off. Um, but also most importantly, at the end when you're done, if you just push Q for quit, that'll then close down PA server ready for you to use it again in the future.